How you doing? Bob Flounders joined by Dave Jones in Downingtown. Dave's got a nice little ball cap on. I'm where I'm repping my uh, high school alma mater, Freedom High School. In what's, it, what's it say? Yeah. Freedom what's High say? School. Freedom High School Patriots. Not to be confused with New Freedom. New Freedom. And there's okay. a Freedom High School. Yeah, there's a new. It's actually just a Freedom High School in Doesn't Western. That's... Doesn't New Freedom sound like a feminine product or something? Hey, like? hey, 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 hey. That's all I'm going to say that is hey. You weren't the Canaries, were you? No, that's Alan. No, that's Canaries. the Allen Canaries, the Deer of Huskies, the Liberty yeah. Hurricanes, the Bethlehem Catholic Golden Hawks. This is the Blue and White <laughs> Breakdown Podcast. We're talking about uh, high schools in the eastern part of the state from the 1980s, uh, some of my golden years. Dave Jones and I are going to get to some Penn State, Maryland news. Dave's got some very... Uh, strong opinions about the, the the first release of the college football playoff rankings. Penn State, spoiler alert, did not make it at five and three. I'm stunned. Uh, we're gonna. I promise we're gonna get to that uh, in a, in a in a little bit, Dave. But uh, just just let's get through this Penn State Maryland game uh, and and your thoughts. I, I Penn State's a ten point favorite. Uh, I know that Maryland beat them last year. I just have this feeling uh, that Penn State's gonna put it on them this week. And it's going to show up in my pick. I just think that if, as long as Clifford's healthy, I, I'm trying to figure out how they lose this game. Has there ever been a more confounding series where, yes. Yes. you know, uh, what was the the game with my nephew in it a couple of years ago? What was that line? It was like minus three for Penn State, wasn't it? Yeah, I've got yeah. it right here. Yeah, and they it covered was, by uh, a scant 56 points. It was, yeah, it was, it was Maryland plus six. Yeah. Yeah, so they covered by 53. Um, <laughs> <laughs> last year i think penn state was favored by like 17 or 14 yeah, or 15. yeah. it was heavy heavy no you know? no it was 27 i'm looking at it wow oh, man and, what do you yeah, think so, dave dave what is the penalty for a, a prominent las vegas odds maker i'm not saying anyone but like a guy for like a really big casino who just sets a god-awful line it just costs the sports book, you know, trillions of dollars. That has well, to be. What do you What do you do? I mean, in that situation, what What would you have made the line last year? Well, I'm guessing if it was 27, um, it probably actually moved up. So yeah, doesn't the bet probably not in trouble? Determine he, he's probably not in trouble because the, everyone bet Penn State because the line went up. So he's I actually will, probably. Yeah. Rewarding. Yeah, I mean the betting public determines that. I don't yeah. know. I will ask. Tony, bad I will ask Tony Sinisi, my old buddy from, uh, yeah, um, um, South Point Hotel and Casino in uh, in Vegas. He's an Altoona yeah. neighbor. I yeah. will, or, or, or old Altoona guy. I will. I will ask that. This is, but you you would have to say over the last few years under Mike Loxley, which is now three, but even before that um under Durkin and and even Randy Edsel this has been the most this has been the most volatile program in the Big Ten where you really they're yeah. unpredictable because they got a lot of athletes and you yeah. never know whether the athletes are going to dominate the game or they're going to get punched in the mouth right. and then cower wither uh, yeah wither <laughs> that's a good word that's perfect a wither yeah and <laughs> A perfect example of that was earlier this season. I mean, we all know Iowa's strengths uh, and weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. But but Man. Iowa Iowa plays them in College Park, and you're really looking forward to this game. It's a Friday, a Friday. Night game. It's a real boxer puncher matchup. A very interesting contrast in styles, and you think maybe it's going to be a really in, entertaining game from that standpoint. And then Iowa punches him in the mouth. And, and like Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan to get punched in the face. And that's what happened to Maryland. I mean, they just withered. They just died and got, what was that one? 51 to 51-14. 14, yeah. yeah. And ta- I think um, I think Talia threw five picks in that game. Yeah, he never figured out that secondary, which was suckering him the whole day. They would move off. They would move yeah. off routes into other routes, right? Which ironically is what Penn State did uh, to my nephew a couple of times in uh, two years ago in the fifty-nine nothing thing. But he was getting people in his face, and Micah Parsons uh, yeah. hit him with one of the dirtiest hits I think I've ever seen in my life. I, mean, <laughs> I, knew, it. I it knew it was incredible. coming. I knew See, it I couldn't was coming. Say all I didn't this. Have to tee up. I couldn't say all this during that because I had to recuse myself from everything. I, I you know. <laughs> But but it was filthy, and he got he got run he got run from the game, and and uh, 
miss the first half the next week. You know, Micah Parsons, a hell of a player. Um, he's a cowboy, Dave, defensive player of the week in the NFL. I, I guess he's playing great, right? I just don't watch NFL much. Dave, he, uh, he became against the Vikings. He had four tackles for loss in the game, 11 tackles, 10 solos. The first rookie uh, defensive player to ever record four tackles for loss in one game in the history of the, in, in the history of the league. In the history of the league? Four tackles for loss. You would have thought Lawrence Taylor would have. Uh, four is a that. four is a big number. Yeah, that's like a four sack game. It's the same thing essentially. But no, no one, no rookie's ever done four. No rookie. Yeah. What was no Reggie rookie. White? What, what was Reggie White like when he was a rookie? Do you remember well, that? technically, he played for the Memphis Showboats. So I don't know if he if he was a rookie, he was like a twenty seven. I remember rookie. that. He yeah. played in the USFL. He did. Yeah. Did and then he came. To, then he came that. to Philadelphia and just kicked the living crap out of every one of the NFC. Everyone, yeah. You remember the, the, remember the tackles in that division? The offensive yeah. tackles in the, in the NFC East that just yeah. couldn't, no one could handle it. And he could him. play all four spots on the defensive lines <laughs> and you couldn't double them. Well, so anyway, to get back to Maryland, this is always their conundrum that they have all these jet fighters all over the field, but they're not really ready to play traditional football, yeah. usually. Uh, Penn State's um demeanor would you say was a little down last year um yeah <clears throat> there were no fans in the stands they had started they were, 0 to yeah. yeah they were they were kind of out of it and it was a uniquely um emotional valley i think for for them which you know you could rationalize maybe it is this way why do you why are you so uh, bullish on them showing up and pounding maryland tell me that because i thought that you know answer me the- that if you would <laughs> you know they, they had lost to the the big game they had circled the ohio state game at home last year you know i didn't really think it was that competitive of a game i think ohio state scored three touchdowns right away and then it was just kind of holding penn state off you know penn state's you know even in even the illinois game it wasn't like they didn't fight they fought in all three of their losses um and when they've had clifford healthy the offense has kind of looked different i just think that they uh you know, they they are, they are due, I think, for uh, an effort where everything comes together. And I think they actually match up, Dave, with with Maryland's issues at wide receiver. I know I know Jared is is a problem, but I just think they match up pretty well with a Maryland team that just you know they're one of the worst teams in the Big Ten at trying to stop the run. I know the Big Ten. I know that Penn State's had issues, but I just have a, if they're ever going to run the ball, Dave. Wait it's a gonna minute. Be, it's going to be. Wait, wait, wait. Are you predicting like a bust out game for Penn State running the ball? I am predicting Penn State will have a hundred yard rusher in this game. How about that, Boy. Dave? How about that? That's a that qualifies as a scalding hot take. I'm That's taking. I'm already. I'm already announcing it. There will be a hundred yard rusher for Man, Penn State. I can't. I can't go with you there. I'm sorry. I, I, All right. I, I, I'm already feeling better about my pick now. I'm already. If they didn't do it against me. Villanova. How are they going to do it against anybody? I don't. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. Um, You're um, Stop mumbling. <laughs> I, I, I think of all the time, all the Penn State Maryland games at at various Maryland venues when I think about this series. Do you remember the 31 30 game at uh, yeah, Raven the Ravens Stadium. Stadium? Yeah. That was actually a really good game. It was. It was an entertaining game that didn't mean a damn thing, yeah. which is this could be too. You know, that's the way I see this. <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think the loser of this game is in straight up free fall, Dave. Straight you know, up. Maryland doesn't care. It's basketball season. Yeah. And I will never forget halftime of the game, not two years ago, but what was it? Four 66 years ago? to three. The 66 to three <laughs> game. And I went, <laughs> what was that at halftime? You know, it was like. It was bad. It was yeah, really it was, bad. It was really horrible. 49 to three or something. Yeah. I remember going down in the, usually we just stay. We, you know, we go, you got your trash box up there with your nice food. And you don't even have to come out. And usually it was a nice don't. day, though. It was a nice late. Yeah, it was a nice, beautiful, day. beautiful night. And I you can went drink beer the there. Corner. You can drink beer in, in the stands. I went down to the concourse just to, to, to kind of, I forget why I went down there. I just wanted to take a walk at half. You're probably bored. Huh? You're probably bored. I wanted to get drunk, probably. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I can't watch anymore. <laughs> I, I felt like my Skip eyes. Carey. I felt like Skip Carey. You remember Skip Carey was the 
He had a problem with alcohol for a while, the old Braves broadcaster. We should bring this Tiny, up. Tiny, tiny problem with alcohol. The Braves just won the World Series. But he would give these little asides during games, and, and it was a really bad game, and the Braves are getting hammered. It's like 1987 or something, and, and they're losing 13-2. to two, And he goes, well, the bases are loaded again, and I wish I was too. <laughs> <laughs> So All God right, so bless, your point, though, about 2017. God bless Go Skip, because the Braves just won the World Series. But yeah. I was I was down in the concourse there with the people. And can you imagine a Penn State game in the concourse, in one of the concourses of Beaver Stadium, or are they getting hammered like that? <laughs> Everyone would be somewhere between a Trump rally and, and constantly <laughs> a, 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 like an angry up in arms everyone all the all the kids were smiling everyone was joking yeah. they don't care they don't care about football there it's a basketball school uh they just don't give it in and so if they're in free fall after this game nobody will nobody will give it in That's yeah but what if, what if what if penn state loses and penn state's in free now fall. now you're on to something <laughs> because uh, uh yeah. maryland if if you didn't pay attention, I mean, and why would you? Last week, Maryland played Indiana. It was a 38-35 game. Indiana is a shot fighter. Yeah, I mean, they, out of quarterbacks. Yeah, they're playing their third string quarterback, who actually looked better than Roberson did. I mean, yeah. he looked pretty good. He wasn't the problem. But their defense has had it. They've had this incredible <laughs> gauntlet of a schedule. Where yeah. They played five top 10 teams. At one point, all five were in the right. top ten that they had played. Uh, they went through this, and I mean, they're just they're, they're just shot, and they still were hanging in there. They still scored thirty five points against Maryland with a third string quarterback. Right. So, what does that tell on you the about road, the on the road? Right. I mean, to your point, if there is a time when Penn State could roll up a lot of points, yeah. this would be the defense to do it against. Yeah. Give me, give me uh, a couple of names on the Maryland side, uh, other than, other than Jarrett and obviously uh, the quarterback. I know that uh, James was very high on the safety. His last name is Cross, and he, he had a really big game against Penn State last year. Is there anyone else uh, that's kind of on your radar? For this well, they're game? not on. They're they're not on defense. I mean, okay. uh, Carlos Carlos Carrier is a kid that that uh, Nick, that 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 Josh played with. For a couple of years, and I think he's 22 at this point. So um, uh, he he is a very capable kid. He's big. He's a wideout. So now yep. he's playing. He's been a second or third stringer all these years. But I'm telling you, this is how Locks has has wideouts stockpiled over there. Yeah, this kid's like six three and 200. He looks like Dante Demas. He's just not quite as fast. And he's capable. He he caught, uh, I think it was 150 yards in catches and two yeah, touchdowns I saw that. last week at uh, against Indiana. Um, they 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 are not depleted completely of wideouts. I mean, they've always got sure. guys who can play on that side of the ball. Their problem is their defense. And yeah. if if Penn State shows up on offense, especially if they run the ball, I mean, I think they can name their score as far as how many points they score. Uh, but uh, Talia Tungavaloa looks good. I mean, he has looked good since that Iowa game when he was completely flustered. Uh, he, yeah. he didn't even look bad at Ohio State, even though they got pounded. Um, he's, he's an interesting quarterback. I don't think he has the greatest coaching in that place. I think if he was in a different place, like if he was at Purdue, I think Jeff Brom could really right. do something with him. I mean, sure. to me, that's the the a Scott Frost, Dave. Yeah, of course, Scott Frost. Yeah, a quarterback guru like Scott Frost. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh, guy like that. <laughs> <laughs> how did How did Jim Harbaugh become a quarterback whisperer? When did that happen? Did, did, did that? I mean, I, how did that How did that happen? Because I don't get it. All he does is ruin quarterbacks at Michigan. He had Kate McNamara. Playing the best game of his life. Did we already go through this? Yes, you were. Puts, you've already had one rant this week about Cade McNamara. You're only allowed one. The guy, week. the guy is a just amazing. I mean, the best game of his life. And let's put JJ in there. It's it's almost like Paterno with ah, I got the headset, Granny. You know, Jesus. <laughs> it, but that's Bo Schembechler. That's his. That's his. Uh, that's his mentor. That's Bo never wanted a quarterback to be a bigger star than Bo. 
And the only guy who ever did it was Rick Rick Leach. Yes. Oh, we said it at the same time. Yeah, we did. The only guy who ever really did it was Rick Leach. And even Harbaugh. I mean, they went at it. Also, I think Rick Leach was a heck of a partier back in the day, if I'm not mistaken. Rick Leach could not be denied. He couldn't. He he was (laughs) unsinkable. In any walk of life. He was unsinkable. He's from my wife's hometown. He's from Flint, Michigan. And he just did not give a damn in a great way. Was he a lefty? No. Uh, I can't remember. Was he? Yeah, I guess he was. I think he right? might have been a lefty. Always remember. Lefties are always oddballs, man. That's a long time ago. Yeah. You know, is it is it weird that whenever I think of lefties, this is how old I am. I think of Bobby Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> how come Penn, has Penn State ever had a lefty quarterback? Of course, Zach Mills. Oh, yeah. The poker player. I keep forgetting about him. You know, Zach Mills lurks on my Twitter page. <laughs> and Daniel, Daniel wrote a really good... I don't think good lurk story. is a really favorable word. Well, that's what they call it—a lurker who never comments. Yeah, but but like creeps. <laughs> yeah, there's there's the, 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 he likes stuff. And Daniel wrote a really good story on uh, Barnes, the the guy who took over yeah. the at Ohio State that Daniel mm-hmm. knew about from five years ago in Maryland, and um, he's from Iamsville, which is Zach Mills's hometown. So I knew they probably knew each other. Zach's a little bit older. But yeah, he's a he's he's Zach will probably be at the game. He's a Maryland guy. The lurker. He's got a new nickname. Hey, now he's the lurker. I don't know if he'll be able to get a seat though. This (laughs) place is going to be packed. Maryland Stadium. He's going to have a twelve pack in front of him. (laughs) Speaking of packed. (laughs) All right. uh, What uh what what are you thinking as far as maybe the key matchup in the game or a question that Penn State's going to have to answer if they're going to win? Just win the game. Forget about win comfortably. Well, I, I would I would like to see them just continue in the Mike Yersich. I do not want to see them try to establish the running game. As, I don't as think they will early. No, they won't. No. And maybe there's some holes to run through after they start yeah. scraping that secondary. And that would be – I mean, we're talking about a third-string quarterback from Indiana who had a pretty good day. <laughs> yeah. He didn't have an interception, threw for a couple 150 yards or something and two touchdowns. This secondary is ripe for the picking. And I think Penn State's uh, wide receiver core is in pretty good condition. No one's really yeah. banged up that we Correct. can tell, right? Yes. Uh, all three the of tight, their big all, all three of their top guys look it's like a good, good it's a good game for the tight ends to get involved because uh, Maryland's lineback linebacker layer is not all that great. Uh, yeah. it, I would I would start with the big 12 attack and just pass, pass, pass yeah. and 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 then if you you run you run some later on, but this this yeah. is a secondary that can be had. Dave, do you think it could almost feel like a Penn State home game with the crowd? Because I think there's seats. It always play. does, doesn't it? That should help as well. I think. Well, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't. I don't know how many people you're going to get at this thing. Are you? Really? <laughs> I would think some Penn State fans who don't get a chance to go to Beaver Stadium and to, are going to come to this game for sure. I mean, there's a lot of players from that area on the Penn State team. It's always been that way. I remember the 70 to, I I went to a game. They all run together anymore. There was one at old Memorial stadium where the Colts used to play. Yeah. Uh, I I think it was 91, 92. Jesus. And, and, and I I think it was 70 to seven. Um, (laughs) It was Kerry Collins played, but I think it was 92. Okay. if If I recall. I mean, half of that stadium was Penn State. More than half was Penn State fans. Not a great um, stadium. Uh, yeah, the, the, you're talking about Memorial Stadium? Yeah, not a great yeah, stadium. Yeah, no, no. I was at <laughs> the a... last, I covered the last NFL game at Memorial Stadium for uh, the Patriot News. I think it was in 96 or 95. They played, I want to say that, I, I don't know if they were still the Houston Oilers or they were some version of that, but I was at the last game and man, you could tell they were putting no effort into no, no. having that stadium like at any kind of uh, clean environment. It was such a strange place, even for baseball. You remember you'd see yeah. the, the the behind home plate camera and you'd look out and you'd like see people's houses out there. I was like, what? And, and I mean, right in the batter's eye, actually. The, you know, people's fastball, Jim Palmer's fastball could come out of like a white house. So they're like, where the hell am I? And that that weird guy with the hat that used to do the game, they hated that guy. Because they lost to the Orioles, the red my Reds lost to the Orioles. Who was that guy? He said the Orioles. That guy. 
Oh, yeah, I can't remember his name either. He, I think he covered. He was also the announcer, I think, for the football, the Colts. For the football Colts, game. yeah, he was like a total yeah. Baltimore Homer. You know, John yeah. Unitas. He would always say John Unitas. He would never say Johnny Unitas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but but it was a you know you drove through uh, you get off at exit seven off eighty three and you drove through a neighborhood right and, and parked and walked through a neighborhood and then all of a sudden here's this stadium right right yeah. there kind of like South Philly with the old vet in the old days. Oh yeah. Um, when really a lot of that was just before they really yeah. developed it, when they started the, the first union center and, and, and I remember it well. Spectrum. Remember how that was all of South Philly was pretty much a neighborhood right up until you got to the stadium. Yeah. Right. right. And then like you got that. to the stadium and there was just nothing but cats and drunks. That's all there was. <laughs> cats. What? Don't you remember that by the end, before they tore it down, they were, there were like stray cats running amok through the bowels of the stadium they were I all should, i should know that above above everyone right because i think yeah. the cats were there to eat the rats because <laughs> there was a ton of rats too well there were I probably think, a lot of rats in that i place. think this blue white breakdown it's podcast out of, is officially out of in the dumper so let's start let's get to our picks so we can talk the college football play uh give it to me go ahead what do you got i haven't even thought about it i'm i'm gonna what's the over under did you look uh, I did not wait. I, no, I can't give you an accurate representation of it. But open. the line is 10. It is 10. It opened at I, 11. It dipped down a little bit. I was I was trying to guess the, the line and I hadn't looked. So I was thinking 11. So that sounds about right. Do you have your pick into for the paper yet, Dave? No, <laughs> um, I never do it to like four. I will. I will say um, Penn State 41, Woo. Maryland 30. I think it's a wild wow. one. It's a shootout. Yeah. Uh, defense is uh, probably a little, you yeah. know, they're not the not the best for wear at this point, especially Penn State going through. Penn State went through a, a tough, tough 60-minute game, and sure. they, they emptied the tank, man. I think those guys, they could be forgiven for taking a little break this week. Yeah, I don't – I have a 31-16 Penn State. Uh, I still think the defense um, – if you can just do a couple things against this offense, I don't think they have to really worry about Maryland really trying to run the ball. The, the big thing, Dave, is, and you said it at the top, I think this is a Maryland team typically discourages if you can get up on them. Now, in the games, like last year, Maryland was up 28-7 at halftime. You know, even in that 20-19 to game, Penn State in 2014, Penn State kept kicking field goals. They couldn't put them away. It was like 19-7. to and then Maryland came back and won it on a, a field goal on the last play of the game. I just think if Penn State can get up on them like they did in 17 and 19, I think they might go a little bit quietly. I think the defense will play well. There will be a 100-yard rusher for Penn State, but it's going to come kind of in garbage time. I think it's not who you play. It's when you play them. And Penn State shot all their, their bullets defensively last week, and they're, they're, they're not going to be quite as – powerful up front as they have been All so right. Penn, yeah, maryland's still got weapons man i mean they still got guys who can who can hurt you and, right. um, i i don't discount the the possibility that maryland could, could score points against it you know if penn state's defense played like it did last week maryland probably they're not scoring any more than they did against iowa but but i don't think they're going to play like they did last week you can't expect them to so that's okay. that's the way i look at it all right, let's get to it, Davey. Tuesday night, they released the initial yeah. standings ranking yeah. for the college yeah. football playoff. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it. I know you had a column, <laughs> you had a column uh, uh, Wednesday morning on Penn Lab. I suggest everyone read it. But uh, you were not exactly happy with. Well, what do you think? What do you think? People know what uh, I think. It's, uh, I mean, it, it's it's like you had said. I think in our previous podcast, they they are not gonna they are not gonna cater to outsiders. Right, <laughs> not catering to outsiders. The velvet you really rope, have to earn it. The velvet rope is in place. It doesn't matter if you do earn it. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Um, now you've seen Cincinnati. You saw Cincinnati at Notre Dame. Yeah. I, oh, I didn't um, see it, but I, I I watched the highlights, and that that was a quality win for sure. Yeah, quality. I mean, I mean, you've you've seen Cincinnati. Yeah. You you saw them. Um, you've yeah. seen them for a couple of years now. I mean, sure. you, you saw them play Georgia in the Peach Bowl last year. Yeah, right. I mean, that's a that was a they, they could have won that game. Um, what am I missing? This is not 
Hawaii. You know, this is not some interloper on the Power Five who doesn't belong there. This is, you know, what it's more like is more like Urban Meyer's. Well, they, it wasn't Urban's Utah. team anymore. But oh. but uh, Kyle Willingham's team that came in the Utah team and to kicked beat up Alabama. Alabama's ass. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. This is more like that kind of team. They are tough. If you saw the the game against Georgia last last this January, I mean that this is a tough team yeah. that is not it was a one possession game, wasn't it? It was twenty four twenty one, I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, 20, 24, 20, 24, 21. They, they, they had the game. I mean, they yeah. kind of blew it at the end. Um, they stood toe to toe with that team, which is now acknowledged as the clearly the best team in college football. It's not that different a team and physically hung with those guys. So this isn't a team that doesn't belong. Now they, they go through stretches where they get bored and they play somebody like Tulane or, uh, you know, Central Florida and they, they are Navy, Navy, everyone's talking about. But what really pissed me off about Gary Barta, that 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 <laughs> exploitive athletic director from Iowa. And I actually tuned in um, Luke Fickle's uh, radio show last night on WLW in Cincinnati, thinking he would be pissed off. It was just like water off his back until the host. And this is a local radio show in Cincinnati. And the host mentioned he WK. was he was like very uh, well you know we, we 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 there's a lot of season left and blah 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 he would he I was surprised he wasn't really that mad about it he he claimed he didn't even watch the show and didn't know where they were and then the host had to tell him and then even after that he wasn't all that mad but until the host told him that Gary Gary Barta in the interview with uh, who's the toady from ESPN who went to uh, Reese Davis yeah. <laughs> It yeah. asked him asked him about the rationale the rationale gary for you know because it's all it's all incestuous that espn is in on the scam the, yeah. the entire thing about why cincinnati was not ready to hire he goes well we we were very impressed with the notre dame win but after that i had to ask myself who else have they played and that really pissed off him. <laughs> it was a strange thing to piss him off but it really pissed him off and i understand what he means because he knows the truth he's been inside the velvet rope he's been in the club and he yeah. knows that michigan state did you watch a michigan state indiana game this is the same indiana team that or Cincinnati Nebraska, yeah. basically blew their doors off in the fourth quarter they wore them down and they beat them by 38 24 and that was a much better stronger indiana team right. uh, with michael Penix still playing quarterback for most of the game yeah. Than the one that Michigan State worn down, wore down and gummed to death, twenty to fifteen, and Michigan right. State only scored thirteen offensive points in that game. What am What am I missing? There is really not that much difference, if at any, between Michigan State and Cincinnati, except their pedigree, their their league. And and I'll even ask you this: after seeing Ohio State against Penn State. What do you really think of Penn State is, is, or Ohio State? Is Ohio State that much better than Cincinnati, if at all? What do you think of Ohio State? Because I know what I think. Yeah, we, talk, we, actually, we actually talked about it uh, on our early, uh, early podcast earlier in the week. I think that Ohio State is still getting its act together. I know that's not, I don't mean that as an excuse, but uh, I think that there was quite an overhaul of the defensive side. And I also think that Ohio State, not that they don't care about defense, Dave. They just want to outscore you. That's all they yeah, care yeah, but, about. But that gets that gets to what I'm trying to yeah. trying to say. Is yeah. there anybody on that defense that scares you? They there are a couple guys that will play in the league, but they're not they're they they are not game changers. Zach Harrison doesn't frighten you. Yeah. There's nobody on that defense that's really tough, to, like a Micah Parsons that you go, or even a Brandon Smith. There's nobody yeah. on that defense like Brandon Smith. Am I wrong? Right. You are, uh, you are you are not wrong. You're yeah, not. I, I don't think this team is all that tough, and they've been rolling up big stats on a on a you know a whole list of canned hams on their schedule since Minnesota and Oregon. After yeah. that Minnesota Oregon game, they're getting credit for riding the ship, and you know who they, who they, who is the who they played. I mean, Akron. That's Gary they beat up Akron. Gary Barta should have been asked. Well, who is Ohio State? Who, who also they played outside yeah. of you know Minnesota and Oregon the first the first two weeks? And and how good is Minnesota? They lost a Bowling Green. I mean, 
Tulsa, Akron, Rutgers, Maryland, Indiana. That's who they played before Penn State. Yeah. I'm just not convinced that Ohio State is up to their usual standards. I'm not. And yeah, I well, think we're going to find out. Gonna get, if, they make the, uh, if they make the tournament, and I'm not even convinced they're going to do that, right. because I think somebody like Michigan State or Michigan could beat them, I think they're going to get their doors blown off in the tournament by right. somebody, whether it's Georgia as a one versus four or whatever right. it is. Uh, I don't think they're that great. So to, to my point, you've got Ohio State, Oregon, and Michigan State all in front of Cincinnati based on schedule strength. What? I mean, you look at the AAC. Yeah, we know the AAC, but it, it, AAC is basically, have you watched Pac-12 football? It is awful. It is awful. It's horrible. Oregon, Oregon, you watch that football out there, and it's just a bunch of guys running around. They don't hit. They don't even have their great quarterbacks like they used to. A lot of the quarterbacks have gone and left for other schools, Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson. Those are all California kids. Um, It's not a good league right now. And people are giving Oregon more credit just because they're from the Pac-12. The Pac-12 is the AAC. That's the way I look at it. I mean, it's a league being dominated by Washington State, Oregon State, Arizona State. None of the heavy hitters are any good. None of the the, 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 except for Oregon. What, What? USC's down, Washington's down, Stanford's way down. It's not a good league. And somehow Pac-12 football is getting credit that AAC football doesn't. It's the same damn league. I, I just, it, it's, it's a rigged system. And I hope they get an antitrust suit after Cincinnati doesn't make it. Because Cincinnati, it, it, Cincinnati should make it simply because it would make the tournament more interesting. I know, All right. That's my opinion. For, so there's my range. For, for the record, Georgia, Alabama, Oklahoma, Michigan State, right? Those were the initial four in some order. No, Oklahoma is like eight. All right. Well, who is that the fourth was, team? Huh? So Michigan State got in, correct? Yeah. Oregon's the fourth one. Oregon's the fourth team. Sorry about that. I just wanted to make that. I wasn't quite and, sure. And, and Ohio State is fifth. Yeah. Also ahead of Cincinnati. Well, so, at, least, at least Oklahoma's out of there. That's a, that's a start. Yeah, it is a start, and but there were eighth. It, it was almost like they followed the pecking order thing. Well, Oregon beat Ohio State; they have to be ahead of Ohio State. And there were there were several ex, there were several examples of that. It was almost like a jury in some cheesy TV movie that gets taken over by two or three people, and everyone goes, "Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right." And they they they, they went with the, all these conventions. It's it's a stupid system. They shouldn't have this committee. It's Olympic figure skating, and that's it. All right. I think that's a great way to end this edition of the Blue White Breakdown podcast. Penn State, Maryland, Saturday, College Park. Penn State's an 11-point favorite. Dave thinks it's going to be high scoring. I don't know that it'll be high scoring, but I do think there's going to be a 100-yard rusher for Penn State. Let's see how it plays out.